Greetings, this is Dr. Jeffrey Scott, and this is my weekend market update for the week with Sunday ending on Sunday, April 21st, 2024. Um, my email address is hgsidoc at gmail.com. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe, hit the alarm so you get a notification when I post these. If you have any comments, whether you're a new or old follower, just put them in the remarks section on YouTube or email me and um, I will respond um, back to you. I title this Market Rotation Can Decimate Your Portfolio. Yeah, this was a tough week, um, but it wasn't down everywhere. And in fact, I'm going to show you some data um, that suggests maybe it's not as bad as it looks. But what we saw was really massive rotation and rotation out of what's been the recent leaders. So if you were stocked up with semis, you had a pretty tough week. Let's take a look at what I'm seeing. First of all, if you like these videos, I do these at stocksanddocs.com on a daily basis. Just if you're new to my channel here, the Sunday video, which I sometimes do on Saturday, is going to be about 45 minutes. It's going to be 15, 20 minutes on my thoughts about the market. And then I'll jump into the program and I will use wealth charts to show you what I'm looking at this coming week and why and my timing system, etc. At the Stocks and Docs site, I try and put a five to 10 minute video up every day when I'm not traveling. Very short compared to the weekend. As always, everything I do is for educational purposes only. I'm a doctor, not a broker. I've got an MD, I've got board certification, but I've got none of the licenses I would need to be a um, financial planner or tell you what to buy. So if I talk about something, take it in the spirit of education. I am independent. I paid for the tools that I use. And trading involves risk, and you alone are solely responsible for any investment decisions you make. I always start to look at the markets. I mean, the first thing I look at is what did the major indices do? Um, I've got six of them here, and they're all bunched up around the oil. And as you could see, um, lots of red. The Dow was flat, and the worst was the NASDAQ minus 5.4 on the week, 5.5 on the composite, 5.4 on the Qs, including minus 2% on Friday. Now, Friday was awful, but it was awful on the S&P and the NASDAQ. The Russell was actually up 0.2, the NYSC was up 0.4, and the Dow was up 0.5. So as bad as it seemed, as bad as the indices looked, there was some strength in the markets on Friday, just not in technology. And you could see over here how far we are since the 52-week high, um, how many, or excuse me, since the 52-week low. Um, the Russell has not taken out its prior highs, um, but all the other indices that we have highlighted in yellow, you could see their 52-week high was somewhere in March. So we're just off the 52-week highs, and nothing's more than 10% off. Now, again, the Russell's not more than 10% off the 52-week high, but that's the one scenario which isn't the all-time high. You could see on the five-day performance of the S&P 1500 sectors that the leadership you know, the, the spiders were down 3%, and the big ones were technology and discretionary, real estate, and then the big winners were staples, financials, utilities. Now, does that sound like a rip-roaring market, or does that sound pretty defensive? It sounds defensive to me. Here's the QEdge tool. Now this tool has a lot of power in it. It runs real time on Metastock. It sits on my one of my monitors and it's sort of one of my heads up displays. The first thing we'll look at right here, the sector performance. You could see on Friday, despite the negativity, 10 sectors were up and one was down. The one thing that was down was information technology. If you look up here, you could see in the S&P 1500, which is much more broad, than the S&P 500 or the Dow 30, 91% of sectors were up, 77% of industries were up, and 71% of stocks were up. That's a uh, bullish posture. If we look down here, this is one day, two day, five, 10 in a month, you could see the last day or so, we're starting to so, show a lot of green. So again, on the premise, it may not be as bad as it looked. Um, we're starting to see some improvement 
in the markets. Oh man, so sensitive. Up here are the buckets, and I'll talk about that in Edgerator tool coming. Now, keeping with the theme of using Metastock as my data source, these are the Q market breadth tools. Um, what I think is fascinating is I'll show you a couple different things. The first thing is these blue arrows up are called the bango. And the bango is an emotional exuberance. People are buying everything. It's typically a sign before a correction. But as you can see, we've had bangos going back to December and the market continued to go higher. Now, this is a composite of the NYSE plus the NASDAQ together. The purple represents um, what we call the Hindenburg Omen. And the Hindenburg Omen is a signal that you'll often see before a market top. And in fact, there's not been a major correction since the beginning of the 1900s that was not preceded by the Hindenburg Omen. Now, the Hindenburg Omen is typically done on the NYSE. But if you think about it, the NASDAQ wasn't available back then. I think it works on the NASDAQ, and I'll show you that. Now, let's look up here. This here is AD lines, here is up down volume, and here is new high, new lows. Notice that we actually were trending towards positive on these things on Friday when the markets were selling off. Again, suggestion that the greater market is doing better than the indices. This blue line, I'll come back to it again, is a three month or 13 week new high, new low. And it's at a level you expect the market to reverse. And then down here, the red dots are distribution days. The green dots are accumulation days. And notice that we had a couple of distribution days occur, another Hindenburg before we sold off. To me, I got to look at the totality of my signals. And this signal said, man, this market was overbought and was going to take a pause. Now, here's the NASDAQ, and you can notice all the Hindenburg omens. Just look how it's rolling over here. And the same picture on the NYSE, more bangos on the NYSE. Now, if you're bullish, especially short term, look at the oversold on the three week new high, new low. Again, an area you expect the market to reverse. Now, this is one of the other heads up displays that I use. This is the Nick Drendel Market Workbook. And what Nick is showing us, and this is a, about a $50 purchase from Nick. There's his email address. And the thing about this is it has its own data supply. So you pay once, it works forever, at least until Excel or somebody changes their data format. You could see here the diamonds were up. The Qs led to the downside. Notice that of the three major indices, he doesn't put the IWM in. All of them are below their 50-day. All of them are below the 50-day, but still above the 200-day. Notice on Friday, staples were up. Financials were up more than 1%. Energy was up more, and so was oil and gas, oil gas exploration. So Friday was a, was a mixed day, mixed bullish, because I think there's more green than red. <clears throat> and you can compare that to the week where just the first four, Staples, Gold Miners, Financials, and Defense, were actually up on the week. The week, to me, did get stronger, or maybe better said, less negative on Thursday and Friday. And if you look here at the new highs, new lows, this is bothersome. It's actually better than it was on Thursday and Wednesday but we still have a preponderance of new lows over new highs, whether I'm looking at the NYSE or NASDAQ, and regardless of time frame, new bulls don't come out of more new lows than new highs. And that's something that could be a, a feather in the bearish camp. Now, rates in white, 10 year on the left, 30 year on the right, up, stocks down, and it's rate rising on the commentary from ever, numerous Fed heads, higher for longer. Recession in the near future? Look, we'll get a recession. We all know we'll get a recession. But if you look historically, the recession occurs after this is a 10 minus 2. Up here is a 10 minus 3 yield curve. The zero line is the, the black line. We in, are inverted on both the 10 minus 2, the 10 minus 3. The gray bar is recessions. Recessions <coughs> occur as the yield curve normalizes. 
Well, we're not normalized yet. What causes a yield curve to normalize? Either the 2 gets lower or the 10 gets higher. Um, 2 gets lower when the Fed starts cutting because of concern about the economy. The 10 or the 30 get higher or when the economy is too hot. Um, right now, the yield curve is still inverted. I'm not too worried. Down here is looking at credit risk, and you can see there's no sign of credit risk or stress in the market. And um, I can tell you, we're actually looking at buying a, a car and some other things. And um, there's no shortage of people wanting to give you loans. Not that I would use a loan, but um, no pressure there, no stress there. And you can see here on the Philadelphia Diffusion Index, um, the economic strength is pretty good. Does the T2121 a short, say a short-term bottom is in? This is the T2121, which is that three-month or 13-week new high, new low. If I show it to you on a daily chart, and let's just do that. Give me a second. And I'll bring it up. If I show it to you on a daily chart, you're going to see that we hit the zone where we almost always will reverse. And let's see if I can find it. Here it is. And to me, this has been something over the years that has been really an accurate gauge. So where's my market breath? And I could go back years. But when we clip, this was the October lows that were so important. Now, you'll notice we got teased in September where it looked like we were bouncing and we came back and retested. And notice with this retest how the markets took off. So we could come back. Now, if I look at the daily, you could see we pulled. And what am I pointing to? I'm pointing to a line where there's almost no new highs versus new lows. And this is where markets reverse. But you could have a stutter step and a retest. But that is encouraging if you're looking for an opportunity to get back into this market. Maybe not yet, but maybe coming. Um, stocks above the 200 was down. Stocks above the 40 were down. This is the first one that actually turned up. AD lines, um, still lockstep and barrel with NYSE, NASDAQ 100, Russell 1000, the big guys. But the little guys, the NASDAQ composite, this was the divergence that was very worrisome. The AD line dropping while the index kept getting higher and higher and higher. Now, the Russell is pretty superimposable, but it's turned down hard as well. So I'd like to see outperformance on this NASDAQ AD line to close this fish mouth here before I get too excited. The buckets. This takes every stock in the S&P 1500, and it basically... Um, pretends you could see the Bollinger Band and the midline. 82% tells me that 82% of the stocks are below the midline of the Bollinger Bands. That's kind of bearish. But I can see there's very only 10% are below the Bollinger Bands. This is from Wednesday. This was very bearish. 30% of the stocks were below their Bollinger Bands, and 90% were below the midline. So are we going to get a retest before we go higher or is the bottom in? This is a bottom pattern. Doesn't mean it's the bottom, but with over 30% of the stocks in the S&P 1500 falling below their Bollinger Bands, 90% of the stocks in the S&P 1500 below the midline of their Bollinger Bands, we're at a point where in the past we've seen markets rally. Just leave it at that. Be careful on the short side. Now, the Hindis fired. We had confirmed Hindis on every platform on the NASDAQ, and we also did on the NYSE. I think the NYSE, I, I feel comfortable saying, at least at Edge Raider, the Hindenburg signal is off. It's still on on the NASDAQ. Notice how on the NYSE, we have dropped below 2% or below the green mark on new highs. That is a big change. In fact, we got red for new lows. We've got red for new lows, which means more than 2% on the NASDAQ. So right now, all I can really say about the Hindis is they fired, and now the new lows are telling me we still are at, have some issues. When we start to see new highs, I get a lot more excited. Now, why did I say rotation? Well, 
staples were up and technology was down, that's rotation. But this is what I call the uh, the, mar the warehouse view from Edge Raider. And what I did is I took fundamentals on the market from the prior week. And I asked the question, based upon those fundamentals, how did stocks perform? Now, the fundamentals were earnings per share rank, relative strength rank, and group rank. And the further to the right, the higher the ERG, which is those combinations. What we see again is you did worse with the higher ERG stocks. Now, I'm a growth investor, so that's not good for me. EPS rank versus relative strength rank, not a lot of trending here, but you, you did some of the worst with high relative strength stocks, excuse me, high earning stocks. Clearly, this is performance. This is relative strength. This week, high relative strength stocks underperformed and group rank of leaders underperformed. So um, technology got run over by a bus. Know your news and earnings. New week starts on Monday. Um, you, you never know what's going to happen. We've got Fed heads talking about inflation being hotter than expected or, or resilient than expected. And this week we got GDP, we got jobless claims, and we got the PCE. That PCE will probably be market moving the most important data of the week. We also got PMIs. I don't see a lot of Fed heads speaking, which means we're probably going in shortly to another Fed meeting. Um, but there's market moving news. And I like to call the next three weeks earnings Lollapalooza because there are earnings up the wazoo and earnings that matter, whether it's Tesla and Visa, whether it's UPS, whether it's IBM, AT&T, um, I think Microsoft is in here somewhere. I think Microsoft is in here somewhere. But it's a, there it is, Microsoft, Alphabet, Intel, very big week of earnings. And as I put in the lower right-hand corner, and I mean it, it's a judgment call to hold stocks over earnings dates. It is bad judgment to not know when your stock's earnings date is scheduled. So market thoughts, another down week in the market led to the downside by the NASDAQ. And then on Friday, the NASDAQ and the S&P had their sixth consecutive loss. They were kind of, that should tell you something. Due for a bounce. Um, ongoing weakness in mega caps and semiconductors, which historic, over the last many months has led. You can see the mega cap growth dropped 5.8 and the semiconductors dropped 9.2. Um, it was a disappointing day, excuse me, week for the bulls as we saw some buy the dips at the open and then fading as the session progressed. Lack of uh, buying conviction. Now, interestingly, the equal weight S&P was only down 1.3. Compared to the mega cap growth, 5.8. Again, sort of, to me, the argument that we're seeing rotation. Multiple drivers of weakness. We called them out already. Um, despite negativity, I see signs of improvement. I show you the outperformance on some of the different tools. Rotation out of tech isn't necessarily horrible. And when I looked at my bottoms up review, what stood out was bank staples and MLPs. So I'm now moving from looking for the top, because the top is, is I think, in process, maybe not completed, but certainly in process. Now I'm going to start waiting for a tradable bottom. That 13-week new high turning up makes me think we might be close. Contra ETFs worked very well this week, but as we get closer to a bottom, they're going to go against you, so be very careful. I'm still heavy in cash. I've got some Contras and I'll probably lighten them up as this week goes on. Um, just to remind everybody, if you own my stuff on Wealth Charts, there is a master class on Wednesday at 7 p.m. I'll spend three hours showing you how I use Wealth Charts, my tools, and, and, and this is just for the marketplace owners of my tools. I realize that some of you own my tools in TradeStation and TradingView. I'll try and do something for everybody inclusive um, maybe next weekend, I'll see how my schedule goes. I don't control the invites on Wednesday, and they will come out from the Wealth Charts team sometime in the middle of the day. Again, just to remind you, if you like my rants and raves, shorter version of this will be at, at um, stocksanddocs.com on Monday, certainly Monday through Friday. 
and uh, then come here to YouTube for the weekend for my longer presentation. All right, so let's end the PowerPoint, and now let's go look at stocks and, and the program. So let's start with my weekly timing model. The weekly timing model is my go-to for long, short, and how aggressive I am in the market, what conviction. So we have changed. We've now entered a sell signal on the Russell and a sell signal on the Qs as we've broken below the WMA and the bond goes red. I am not on a sell yet. I'm neutral on the spiders and I'm neutral but close to a sell on the diamonds. That is a big difference than it was over the last couple of months and that tells me be careful here. Doesn't mean the market's going down. We could certainly bounce on Monday. I'm looking for a bounce to happen soon. But right now, I don't have anything that says go all in to the down, to the upside. The daily market's been in a sell in all four of them. And you could see um, it was much earlier to call the short signal. Um, and it's not giving me anything close to a buy signal. Notice the bongos are red everywhere. If I go and I look at the five-minute charts, it's like a ski slope for the S&P. Um, at the opens, we had buy the dips at the open, um, but the markets went nowhere on the week and finished lower. If we look at the daily charts, you're going to see they've squirted out below their support. So here is the S&P 500 with the SPY, broke through the 50, didn't give us much of a rally and has broken down. Um, the MACD is negative. They're at only minus eight. It can get much lower. Um, kind of get the feeling that this 200 is going higher and it runs into the white line. Um, and we'll see if that happens. But the 50% line is where the 200 is. So my target, unfortunately, is somewhere between these green lines. I think this thing could come down further and any rally that we see might be something to consider taking profits and reshorting the market. The NASDAQ, that's a composite. Let's look at the Qs, has squirted down below the 50 as well. Big volume on Friday, uh, but I think there were options expiration. That's part of the volume driver. The diamonds actually were up on Friday. And let me fix that. Uh, I won't bother right now. And then here is the Russell. The Russell was also up a bit on Friday. The spiders led to the downside at point, negative 8.87. The Qs were even worse at 2%. On the week, if we look at the VIX weekly, you could see for the week, the VIX was up 8%. And the UVXY on Friday was up 3.83. And on Friday, the VIX itself was up 3.94. I've been watching the dollar. The dollar took out the 200 is now going sideways here at an area that has been resistance in the past. That's worrisome. If I look at commodities, um, gold higher, silver higher, I think they're propelled by a lot of reasons, um, including what's going on with Iran and Israel. Um, at some point, if this dollar keeps going higher, that'll probably pressure commodities. If we look at oil, oil had a nice run up. And despite what's going on with Israel and Iran, um, I guess the energy markets don't believe there's going to be much more any any intermediate or long term shock. Um, natural gas continues to be dead to me. And you can see the 10 years poking up above a line that has been resistance in the past. So dollar at at, at levels of breaking out higher as is the 10 year and both of them would not be great for the US stock market. Next thing I'd like to look at is the sectors to see if we have anything that's leading. Let me just go here and fix my Bitcoin. I think they ended up what I believe is there was a change in the um, s some of the mapping with Tastyworks plus my cache was full. So the reason why I had trouble the last couple times getting the 10 year and the Bitcoin from Tasty, I had to clear my cash. It's obviously working now. So there's some things here that really stand out to me. You want to see strength in the market? Look at materials. Look at energy. Look at financials off the mat. 
regional banks were all over the place. Industrials are strong. Staples are strong. Utilities are strong. Well, what's not working? Biotech, healthcare, eh. Discretionary is not working. Real estate's not working. Technology's not working. So these are all ratio charts relative to the spiders. So yeah, the market is can't get out of its own way right now. But boy, there are parts of this market that are starting to move. How long has it been since we've seen lines, these green lines, like we're seeing in financial and staples, such strong ends of the week. Now, with staples and utilities looking great, that also tells me we got problems because those are defensive. Let's move into the stock scanners. And in the stock scanners, um, let's start with the heat map. That was what Friday looked like. Now, remember the diamonds were up, the Russell were up. This is the S&P 500. The S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 were both down the NASDAQ even more. And if we look at the Russell, which may take a few seconds, but I've got a fast internet, you could see a lot more mixed and more green. So no question that the markets um, are going through a change. And I, for one, looked looked at the valuation of these technology stocks over the last several weeks, and they were priced for perfection. And the price to earnings ratios were sky high, and the earnings have been started to slow. And that's not a prescription for getting higher prices. So rotation, rotation, rotation. If we look at Wealth Scanner and we look at my top down indices to see what comes up to the top, we continue to see SARC short the ARKK. Um, and that's, a, you know, if this was a stock, I'd say that looks great. It's going to have some hesitancy around the 200, but that one looks fine. We've got some weird things floating rate notes. We got super dividend emerging markets. We got the dollar. We got short the Dow. We got short the small caps. We got gold miners, gold, gold, short the bonds, utilities, silver. Notice how small those numbers are. Nothing's above 800. So the overall markets have weakened. If we want to get a sense of what's not working in the market, you can switch to a bearish, bearish analysis. And then when that's done, I'll flip the, the order so transports real estate pharma genomics biotech telemedicine cybersecurity biotech real estate arc genomics are all maxed down so Growth. These are growth ETFs. Things that in good markets lead are certainly underperforming here. So I'm going to think about those sectors and I'm going to start to look in some of those. Now, one thing I thought was interesting, first of all, kudos to Wealth Charts. I got, I've been concerned that these, this thing here has not been working, which is the hot stocks, and they fixed it. I've been told that they're close to being done with their earnings um, report thing that used to work. But with, and I'm a software technology guy. Actually, I'm a doctor who has a software technology company. Um, and I've learned the hard way that when you push out updates and feature releases, sometimes you break things that worked. And I get it. You have to fix them. And this is now fixed. Look what's here. Airlines, Kraft, Heinz Kraft. We're going to come back to this. It's a nice looking chart and it pays a dividend. In fact, let's look at it right now. Is this not what we like to look? Here's sort of a cup, a handle, and a breakout, a wealth signal, and an EPS, EMS, volume, breakout, momentum, not extended, strong relative strength, and strong OBV. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Consumer staple, boring. Dr. Pepper. Same thing, about to take out the 200. Church and Dwight, all those boring products that you buy from brushing your teeth to gargling to deodorant, 
and other um, over-the-counter products at the drugstore. A lot of them come from Church and Dwight. Big runner, pull back to support. Not much volume. Relative strength looks great. OBV looks great. Not extended. This is the kind of stock that does well in a bad environment. Staples. And then the insurance stocks still look good and progressive. What a nice move up. Sideways move. And then a breakout on Friday. Big volume breakout momentum from the squeeze with relative strength and OBV look good. Commerce Bank shares. Um, uh, probably not my favorite in the group. But here's one that had volume and breakout had a momentum a couple days ago from a squeeze but that regional bank group is looking interesting Alamos Gold running up here a nice 45 degree uptake General Dynamics one of the you know there was aerospace and defense and then Genuine Parts another consumer staple I believe so the point is very defensive looking very defensive. No Microsoft, no Apple, no Tesla, no Google, no Netflix, no Amazon. This market has gone defensive. So when I go over it back to the scanners, my go-to tool is called the CAT scanner. Let me give you some background. I've spent a lot of time trading. I've been doing this for 30 years. <clears throat> Every weekend I look at it, one to one and a half thousand, so a thousand to 1500 individual charts. I've kept track of things I bought, things I've sold, what's worked, what hasn't worked. And I learned over the years certain things are good. I look for a change in character. I want stocks that have been going sideways. That's a good thing. Stocks that are squeezing. That's a good thing. But I want to get them when they're breaking out of it. And I'm looking for Bible gap ups like Chris Catcher and Gil Morales described. Big volume also morales and catcher catcher breaking out momentum so those are four things gaps volume breakouts and momentum that will get my beady eyes to look at a chart to see if it's a viable looking chart a squeeze is good because if i have a squeeze it tells me the stock has been resting all right so i basically built a tool that allows me to scan for those signals i also learned some other things I've got this tool called the bongo. The bongo is my trending indicator. It will be green and uptrends and red and downtrends, same tools I use in my timing model. If I want to find stocks that have pulled back, I'll look for a weekly that's green. This isn't one of them. We'll look at some in a minute. Um, and I'll look for a reversal to green on the daily. And then I learned that relative strength outperforming the spider is good. So I look at that line, which is RS versus the SPY on the interest, on whatever instrument and going above its moving average and on balance volume above its moving average. And that's kind of what I look for. So let's look at my scanner and let's go look at consumer staples to start. Because consumer staples look interesting. Now I'm going to rank it by dots, and you're going to notice that the best things come right up to the top. And I'm looking here, I can see, are you in a squeeze? How many of my bullish dots or bearish dots, depending on the scan? A green candle low, red candle high, or single candle reversals? Bongo, trending, and how many weeks or how many days? High, low jump, are you extended? And then the EMS, which is a algorithmic model that I have <clears throat> for buy sell independent calculated this is reinforcing so KHC we already looked at craft comes right to the top so my scan would have picked this up because why I got volume I'm breaking out and I've got some momentum my daily bongo just switched to green from red while the weekly bongo for the last several weeks has been green relative strength is outperforming the spider um, balance volume is doing good and this is one that I like a lot now I might ask myself do they just have earnings because that's important and I don't know so I might just go until it's fixed in wealth charts into trading view and see if I, it had news here so rises as market takes a dip Price action amid inflation on track and maintained as a buy. So it's up probably because the market is weak. 
and we could see here it's had a bunch of surprises on earnings, but we just kill that. The earnings growth is modest at best, but they've had surprises, and their next earnings are out May 1st. So we're a couple weeks away. So this one looks interesting. The next one, Coca-Cola. Not what I'm typically buying. Kind of a sideways looking stock here, so I probably would have passed. But a breakout above this levels would be kind of interesting. Sprouts Farmers Market. Like this chart a lot. Uh, I'm assuming this isn't a buyout. So here's a stock that had a big move up. Four dots, gap, volume, breakout, momentum. Traded sideways, letting the moving averages catch up, and then it broke out again on Friday on decent volume with a breakout momentum. The bongo just turned to green on the daily. Relative strength and OBV look good. Not extended. I like SFM. The next one is BG. BG is like CF I talked about a week or two ago. It's a fertilizer and, and chemical stock. Nice breakout here. It's now taken out the 200. <clears throat> Pull back. <clears throat> and then on Friday, had good volume and a breakout. Relative strength and OBV look good. Keep in mind, these are all boring companies as far as I'm concerned. And in a strong market, not a place that I'm going to look at. But if this market continues to sell off and the market participants go defensive, they're going to be buying consumer staples. And then lastly, we'll look at um, Tyson Foods breaking out from a base as well. So that was one place. Another place we said looked good was financials. So I've got it set up the same. Allstate. So insurance companies are in this group, and that were some of the dominant groups that I saw with strength. So beautiful uptrend, pull back to the 50, and two days of up moves, good volume, breakout momentum, just flip the bongo. Relative strength and OBV looks cheap, looks great. American Express pulled back to the 50 on Friday, had a big move. HOMB starts to be some of the regional banks, home bank shares, taking out the 50. Not as pretty a pattern as some of the others. MT Bank, Baltimore Bank, again, kind of congestion-y. PGR, progression, progressive. Like that a lot. Look at this beautiful move, little pullback. Looks like it's getting ready to run again. So financials look interesting. I may actually have insurance, but they'd all be captured within the financials. I've built these over time. Yeah, progressive in all state. And then industrials. Let's see if anything here has pullbacks and uptrends. And that's my favorite trade. So I built the scan for that. I mentioned defensive plays. Now it's kind of had a deep pullback, weird cup and handle and breakout, but that one looks like it wants to go higher. Northrop Grumman too far down in its layout. Alaska Air Group, the airlines were strong. Delta started with strong earnings. United American have followed, and this one is running with them as well. Generac, if you live down here in South Florida, you have one of these. Um, they haven't had any hurricane action that I'm aware of, but this thing likes to run in hurricane season. We're in hurricane season. Or So I've looked at two industry groups, two of the stronger groups. Um, energy was up there. Let's see if energy popped out at all. So I've created, and, I, and I'll give these out to my, my team, the folks that bought my stuff on the uh, master class the various ETFs or the components. So Amplify is a low cost oil exploration and production, which I liked. Here was a sideways move, a breakout, pullback, and running again. Breakout, momentum, volume, relative strength that OBV look good. Kinder Morgan might just talk about this one as an example of the MLPs, the pipeline and transmission companies. They get paid a tariff on everything that goes through. They're doing extremely well. Many of these pay a dividend. I've talked about ET over and over again as the one that I own. It doesn't mean it's the best, but I've been in, 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 in this, and you can see why. 
but most of them or many of them in the industry have had big steady moves higher. They pay a dividend and they continue to work. Now, this was a top down approach. I started with the markets and I said, I'm careful, but I think things are stirring underneath and we might want to look at defensive positions. I looked at stables and financials, which I saw on my industry and sector analysis were some of the strongest areas. And then I found the leading stocks in them that we've reviewed. Sometimes it's a lot more fun to do bottoms up and to create a list of attractive stocks and run your scans on that and look for things that are breaking out and showing excitement. So this is my combo leaders list. And these are our from many different places. They might be from websites that I subscribe to, scans that I've developed in other programs, things in wealth charts, HCSI, and other places that I build my watch list from. And I just put them in a super list to scan. So I don't know anything about Paramount Global. I think I watch some of their shows on TV. And there must be something going on in the entertainment because you've got Paramount Global, you've got Fox, and I think I saw some others over the weekend as well. Um, they're not growth. They're not really breaking out to new highs. Not my kind of play. Allstate, we already looked at. This one looks beautiful. You're in good hands. Amplify, a low-cost oil producer. Atmos Gold, or Atmos Energy, rather. You know, it looks like it's going higher, but it's really stuck in the sideways chop. We looked at American Express. Utilities are also doing well. They're also defensive. They pay a dividend. And this is Duke Energy. And this one it seems to be breaking out after a sideways move with breakout momentum and volume coming out of a squeeze, a bongo flip, relative strength in OBV, not extended. I believe Enteran is another utility. HOMB was one of the regional banks. You can see here, we, we talked about already trying to break out there. There's your KHC and KMI. There's your Coke. There's your M&T Bank, Progressive Insurance. Beautiful chart. Is it time to get back in? SFM, Sprouts Farmers Market. And there's a, I'm just looking at this list, and there's quite a few things that look interesting to me. So we are now 42 minutes in. This is what I do every day, not the first 20 minutes where I sat and I looked at different pictures and said, this is what I think the market's doing. I rely on my market timing model, but I also like the top down approach. Why do I use wealth charts? Because it makes it easy. There are other things that you can do. You can just go into this um, hot stocks and you can just look at the ETFs there to get a sense of what's working. That would be another way of finding what's leading to go fishing in it. So let's just do that very quickly. And you have utilities, regional banks, munis, short-term bonds. Don't look that exciting, but they've had a big move up. And what these are picking are things that had a big move to the upside. Now, the height of the score tells you where they came from. If it's a high score, then that's been something that's been outperforming. So something um, like the diamonds actually had a flame here. Why? Because they improved a lot on Friday, but they're coming off of a very negative scenario. So I will look at this, but I'll mostly look at it to maybe put the NASDAQ 100 and see if anything is standing out there that has a lot of moves of late, and that's where KHC and Dr. Pepper first came in. So I hope you like this review. Please comment on your thoughts. If you're looking at other things, I'd love to hear. If you have something that I should be looking at, you know, I can learn. I'm open-minded. Now, I do have a, a broad buy list, and I'll just look at it very quickly, and I got a short list. Um, Arch Capital is another insurance company, big runner, pullback, looks like getting ready to run. I'm just seeing if there's anything here that I wanted to show you um, that we haven't already talked about. There are things like tractor supply that aren't giving me a lot of signals down here. 
let's just wait for it to load. I mean, it did have, to its defense, a breakout and momentum, or excuse me, a volume and a breakout, and an EMS signal. It is sitting right on the 50. If this thing is going to bounce, we have a name for the 50, taught to me by my favorite educator and mentor, Ian Woodward, is free parking. And that great stocks will come back from time to time to the 50, and they can be great places to make your purchase. So that one looks very interesting there as well. Ozark was a regional bank that looked to me like a little bit better than the last one. Why? Because it's starting to clear this area in here. Um, but this is one that's moving. A lot of the regional banks were moving. We could look at KRE, which is an ETF for just those regional banks as well. Bottom fishing. But these have been beaten up, and I did see quite a few of them looking interesting on my review. So on that note, I think I'm going to say goodbye. Have an awesome week in the market. Be careful. I am looking for a, a turnaround to continue. Maybe not Monday. Maybe we'll get a turnaround Tuesday. There are geopolitics and there is data and that PCE on Friday should keep us on our toes. And don't forget, it's earnings, Lollapalooza. And um, I don't care um, how good you are. If you don't know when your earnings are, it's not good. And um, it's something that took me a while to learn. You got to know what to do. Do you hold them? Or do you fold them? And that's an individual decision. And I'm not giving investment advice. I'm just talking about education. Have a great, great week in the market. And thank you for being here.